to go live to the WMSC studios as Wisconsin Hybrid Theater presents A Carol on Brady. Happy holidays, radio listeners, and welcome once more to Radio WHT. Radio what? Exactly. This is Wisconsin Hybrid Theater's Jack Farwell, and I'm here in the WMSE studios with Russell Downer. You may recognize his voice as Dr. Darling from Lonely Hearts of Sacred Hearts Hospital. And with me, as always, is the charming and attractive Miss Alice Chase, and of course, the infinitely perturbable Mr. Ira Hampton. And over in the corner, there's a giant box wrapped in shiny green paper and topped with an enormous red bow. Alice, you're closest. Can you read the tag? Sure, Jack. It says, to our listeners from Radio WHT, Radio what exactly? Well, go on, Alice. Open it up. Hey, look, everybody. It's the Bootless Bettys. Hiya, Jack. Oh, what am I, mincemeat pie? Hello, Ira. What am I, figgy pudding? Hello, Russell. What am I, the shining star that hangs upon the highest bough? All right. Uh, Ladies and gentlemen, and you, Tommy, and you, Mary, Frontier Radio Theater and Radio WHT proudly present Milwaukee's Bootless Bettys. Sleigh bells ring, are you listening? In the lane, snow is glistening. A beautiful sight, we're happy tonight. Walking in a winter wonderland. Gone away is a bluebird. Here to stay is a new bird. We sing our love song as we go along. Walking in a winter wonderland. Mm-hmm. In the meadow he can build a snowman And pretend that he is Parson Brown He'll say, are you married? We'll say no man But you can do the job when you're in town Later on we'll conspire as we dream by the fire To face unafraid all those plans that we made Walking in a winter wonderland Over the ground lies a mantle of white, a heaven of diamonds in the lovely night. Do, 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 In the meadow we can build a snowman and give him a name and call him Parson Brown. He'll say, are you married and we will say no man but you can do the job while you're in town later on baby we'll conspire as we dream sitting by the fire to face unafraid all those plans that we made a walking in a winter wonderland oh a walking in a winter wonderland oh walking in a winter Thanks, girls. That was really winterific. All righty. Without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, let's begin our story. Radio WHT presents A Carol on Brady, starring yours truly as Scrooge. Extra, extra, read all about it. I say, boy, what's the news? Marley is dead. Marley's dead. Marley? Dead? Marley dead. Well, of course Marley was dead. Who knew better than me? Marley had been my business partner for I don't know how many years, and I was his sole executor, his sole administrator, his sole mourner, his sole friend. I signed the register of burial. I threw dirt on the box. Why, I I did everything but take his name off this door. Tree. Merry Christmas, Mr. Scrooge. Bah! Merry Christmas, Christmas. humbug! Yes, old Marley was dead. Dead as a doornail. Mind, I don't mean to say that I know, upon my own volition, of my own knowledge, what there is particularly dead about a doornail, I might have been inclined, myself, 
to regard a coffin nail as the deadest piece of ironmongery in the trade. But I don't make the rules, so let me repeat emphatically, Marley was dead as a doornail. And if you're in the market for a brand new doornail, coffin nail, fingernail polish, floor polish, floor mop, or rag mop, come to Brady Street Pharmacy at the corner of Astor and Brady. If you are not a tight-fisted, squeezing, wrenching, grasping, clutching, covetous old sinner like Scrooge, you will appreciate the reasonable prices at Brady Street Pharmacy. So remember, there are two things which you can be sure of, that we have everything you need at Brady Street Pharmacy, and Marley was dead. Merry Christmas, Uncle Scrooge! Humbug! What, Christmas a humbug? Bah, humbug! Come, Uncle, is that all you will say? No, I will also say this, that every idiot who goes about with Merry Christmas on his lips should be boiled in his own pudding and buried with a stake of holly through his heart. Uncle! He should. Uncle! Nephew, what right have you to be merry? You're poor enough. What right have you to be miserable? You're rich enough. You keep Christmas in your way and let me keep it in mine. Keep it, Uncle, but you don't keep it. Uh, let me leave it alone, then. Much good may it do you. There are many things for which I have not profited. For example, Christmas. But Christmas time is a good time, a kind time, a charitable, pleasant, forgiving time, when men and women think of people around them as fellow passengers on this planet, and not a race of aliens bound on parallel journeys. Ergo, Uncle, though I have not profited from Christmas, Christmas has profited me. And I say, Merry Christmas. <laughs> Thanks for that, Bob. Another sound from you, Cratchit, and you can keep your Christmas by losing your job. Don't be angry, Uncle. Come dine with us tomorrow. Good afternoon, nephew. It'll be fun. We'll play some games. Good afternoon. Blindman's bluff? Maybe a little yes or no? Good afternoon. Ten lords of Merry Christmas to you, then, and a happy new year, Uncle. Cratchit, you lunatic, close that door before you let in the... Dag nabbit, too late. Scrudge and Marley's, I believe. I'm collecting for the poor. Have I the pleasure of addressing Mr. Marley or Mr. Scrudge? Marley is dead. Mr. Marley has been dead for seven years. He died seven years ago this very night. I threw dirt on the box. Well, Mr. Marley's generosity will be missed. Everyone says there is no one more generous than Mr. Marley, except for Mr. Scrudge. Scrooge, madam. It is pronounced Scrooge, and no one says that. Well, I'm sure, sure somebody... Now I... tell me, madam, are there no prisons? Are there no poor houses? There are, Mr. Scrooge, but many cannot go there, and many would rather die. Are there no cemeteries? What shall I put you down for? Nothing. You wish to remain anonymous? I wish to be left alone. Very well, Mr. Scrooge. Merry Christmas. Bah. And you? Humbug. Oh, uh, Mr. Scrooge. Ah, uh, yes, Cratchit. You, yeah, you wanted to say something right, about, about tomorrow. Yeah, was... You want the whole day off, I suppose. Well, my family. Is... Actually, no. It's not convenient, and it's not fair. Would I be fair to not pay you and expect you to work? Oh, I suppose But not. you don't work, and yet you expect me to pay you. Christmas? Ah, poor excuse for picking a man's pockets every 25th of December. But I suppose you must have the whole day. Be here all the earlier the next morning. It was dark on the way home. Dark is cheap, and I like it. No one spoke to me along the way. No, how are you, Mr. Scrooge? No, what's the time, sir? Not even spare a tuppence. Blind man's dog saw me and tugged his owner into a doorway. It was the very thing I liked. I reached my front door, where the fog and frost hung so thick and dark that everything was hidden in shadow. Everything but the door knocker. I had seen that knocker night and morning during my whole residence in that place, and there was nothing very unusual about it, except that it was large. Very large and glowing, large and glowing, and when I placed my key in the lock of that door, I saw in that knocker, not a knocker, but Marley's face. Marley's face, its ghostly spectacles resting on its ghostly forehead, its ghostly hair curiously stirred as if by breath or hot air, and glowing like a lobster in a dark cellar. I walked in and shut the door and locked it.
and check the house, just in case. Sitting room, bedroom, lumber room, all as they should be. Nobody under the table, nobody under the sofa, nobody under the bed. Let me just check the closet and... <gasps> what, what's that? Oh, my. It's my dressing gown hanging in a suspicious attitude. Nobody in my dressing gown. <laughs> Humbug! Ladies and gentlemen, we wish to pause our narrative for a moment at this point to warn our younger and more sensitive listeners that the following scene contains subject matter which some may find potentially disturbing and troubling, and that subject is indigestion. If you've ever laid awake at night by persecuting the goblins of your own creation, then you need to stop by Brady Street Pharmacy, where a friendly, knowledgeable staff can be your guide through the various antacids and other indigestion remedies available at the aisles of Brady Street Pharmacy. But don't worry about Scrooge. He isn't experiencing indigestion. In fact, right at this minute, he's experiencing, he isn't experiencing anything. Just now he is lying in bed, starting into the dark and listening. I know you. You're Jacob Marley. Or rather, you were Jacob Marley, and now you are transparently the ghost of Jacob Marley. May I sit? Can you sit? I can. Well, then do it. Ooh. Hmm. <sighs> you don't believe in me. You see me. You hear me. I'm sitting in your chair. Why do you doubt your senses? Because a slight disorder of the stomach makes them cheats. You may be no more than an undigested bit of beef. A, a blot of mustard. A crumb of cheese. A fragment of underdone potato. <laughs> Scrooge! <laughs> Enough! I believe in you. I, I believe in you. Why are you here? I was you once, Scrooge. I was you before you were you. And if you continue to be you, you will become me. All right. I'm glad you asked. I wear the chain I forged in life. I made it link by link. Are you impressed? You wouldn't be if you could see your own chain. I can see it. It is a ponderous chain. Oh, Jacob, speak comfort to me. I cannot give comfort, Ebenezer. I cannot take comfort. I cannot rest. I cannot stay. I cannot linger anywhere. And yet you sit here in my chair. But I'm not really supposed to. You still have not told me why you're here. I came here to warn you that you have yet a chance and hope of escaping my fate. You will be haunted by three spirits without their visits. You cannot hope to shun the path I trod. Expect the first tomorrow when the bell tolls one. Scrooge! Ding dong! There's the quarter hour. Ding dong! There's the half. Ding dong! Quarter to it. Ding! Ha! And the hour's square. Pfft, one o'clock and no... Boo! <laughs> I didn't say dong! Who are you? I am the ghost of Christmas past. Long past? Your past. Rise and come with me. Well, you know, I, I would rise and go with you, only the, the bed is so nice and warm and... Uh, all right, apparently I am out of my bed. How did that happen? Uh, but honestly, I can't come with you, not the way I'm dressed in slippers and dressing gown and nightcap. And, and anyhow, I have a cold just now. Uh, all right... Seems I am going to come with you then, spirit, but, but not through the window. We're on the third story. I'm mortal. I'll fall. I'll die. Touch my robes. Do you recognize this warehouse, Scrooge? Recognize it? Why, wasn't I apprenticed here? 
It's, it's old Fezziwig. Oh, bless his heart, it's Fezziwig alive again. Ha! You, who there? Quit in time, Ebenezer. Quit in time, Dick. Dick? Oh, Dick! Dick Wilkins. Oh, bless me, yes, there he is. He, he was always very attached to me, was Dick. No more work tonight before it's is Christmas Eve. Let's turn this old warehouse into a brilliant domestic ball. Ebenezer, sweep the hall. Dick, mop the floor. Ebenezer, hang the wreath. Dick, light the lanterns. Ebenezer, set out the napkins. Napkins? Yes, napkins, my good man. Don't we have any napkins? Well, no worries, no bother. Just nip right out and fetch us a pack. And pick us up some party hats out there while you're at it, won't you? Though, don't just stand there, Ebenezer. You know where to go. You know you can find whatever you need at Brady Street Pharmacy. Napkins, plates, even party hats are all in stock right now at the Brady Street Pharmacy in Milwaukee at the corner of Astor and Brady Streets. Brady Street Pharmacy and Radio WHT would like to take this opportunity to remind you, at this busy time of the year, slow down and cherish, cherish every moment as it is happening. Otherwise, that big holiday party that you've been planning and looking forward to for so long may be, may be over soon, and you will have missed everything but saying good night to your guests. Good night, everyone. Thanks for coming. Oh, good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night, Dick. Good night, Ebenezer. Merry Christmas, boys. Oh, uh, good old Fezziwig. Silly mortals! <laughs> Silly? So thankful. So grateful. So appreciative. For what? A party. With paper napkins. It isn't that. It, it isn't that, spirit. He has the power to render us happy or unhappy, to make our service light or burdensome, a, a pleasure or a toil. Why, the happiness he gives is quite as great as if it cost a fortune. A fortune? Mm. I should like to say a word or two to my clerk, Bob Cratchit, just now. I'd like to tell him... Scrooge! Gosh. Be quiet! Shh! My stories are on! Join us now as we tune in again to another heart-rending episode of Shadows of the Past... Spirit, no. Switch the station. With Belle as the pretty but penniless orphan, still mourning the death of her parents and her ambitious fiancé, Ebenezer. Cruel spirit, what happens now? And now, Shadows of the Past, starring Scrooge. Yes, Ebenezer? No. Well, no. Stop protesting. You must understand that I'm only doing this for you. I'm releasing you to be with your true love, money. You are rejecting me, Belle, because I want to better myself. I'm not rejecting you. I'm releasing you. Have I ever sought release? That is not the question. What is the question? To be or not to be. <laughs> If you had to start all over with me, if we could go back to the beginning, would you? I was a boy then. And now you are a man. You've said so. You understand that money can't love you back. You do understand that, don't you, Ebenezer? For a long time I thought that gave me an advantage. I was wrong. Are you trying to hurt me, Belle? A little. I do hope that you will feel a little pain or feel something. Maybe you will hurt, but only until the banks open on Monday morning. Then you will forget all about me, until I become no more than a shadow of the past. Spirit, switch the station. Another man's family. Welcome, Ebenezer Scrooge, to Another Man's Family, starring Belle as another man's wife. As we join another man's family, another man enters laden with Christmas toys and presents and is immediately besieged by a swarm of children. <laughs> <laughs> Belle, my love, guess who I saw today? Ooh, give me a hint. It's the last man you'd ever think of. Uh, Ebenezer. Miss... <laughs> Mr. Scrooge, it was. I passed his office window and saw him sitting alone in the candlelight, alone on Christmas Eve. Quite alone in the world, I do believe. What of his partner, Mr. Marley? Oh, Belle, hadn't you heard? Marley is dead. <laughs> 
or dying rather, could be dead, good as dead, not full out dirt on the box, coffin nail dead yet, well, I'll be surprised if you last of the night, and I should know, after all, I am a world famous physician. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you are. I certainly did marry a smart, rich man who also loves me very much. Come, children, and wish your father Merry Christmas. Merry, Merry Christmas, Christmas, Papa! Christmas, Papa! Merry Christmas! Christmas. Um, spirit, switch the station. Yes, well, back in my own bedroom. In my own bed. Oh, well, that was certainly the... Ma- hmm. <coughs> <coughs> In the nick of time. The hour of one. Come now, spirit, be my guest. I'm waiting for you. Spirit, sweep out the curtains from my bed and show yourself. Why won't you show yourself? Where is that ruddy music coming from? Uh, I, I think it's coming from the other room. I was ready for a good field of strange appearances, and nothing between a baby and a rhinoceros would have astonished me much. Still... I was not prepared for the ghost of Christmas present. Come in, man, and get to know me. The spirit was wearing an antique scabbard, but no sword, and relaxing on an uncouth throne of heaps of turkeys, geese, game, poultry, brawn, great joints of meat, suckling pigs, long wreaths of sausages, using as sausages, Mince pies, plum puddings, barrels of oysters, red-hot chestnuts, cherry-checked apples, juicy oranges, luscious pears, immense twelfth cakes, and seething bowls of punch that made the chamber dim with their delicious steam. And before a man can say Jack Robinson, we stood in the city street upon a Christmas morning. The house fronts looked black enough, the windows blacker, and the white sheet of snow covered the roofs like sugar gravy. And faster than a woman can change her mind, we traveled to cities and villages around the world. And in every home, there were people gathered to share a meal. And over each meal, the spirit played his horn. Is there a particular flavor in what you blow from your horn? There is, my own. Would it apply to any kind of dinner on this day? To any kindly given to a poor one most. Why to a poor one most? Because it needs it most. Excuse me. You did, sir. Sir, I did not. Then do, or move on. (laughs) I'm so sorry, sir. I was impossibly wrong. Sir, nonsense. It was I who was wrong, and I apologize. Oh, imagine. Us. Arguing. On Christmas Day. Preposterous. Ridiculous. Where was I? Uh, because the poor need it most. Uh, where are we? At your clerk's house. Cratchit? Bob Cratchit's house, blessed by your horn. <laughs> oh, children! Your father will be home presently, and Tiny Tim with him. So listen carefully. Uh, oh, Belinda, help me lay the table. Peter, mash those, pa- those potatoes. Oh and, oh, and mind your cuffs and collar. They belong to your father, remember? Oh, and keep an eye on your younger brother and sister. <laughs> Oh, uh, where is your oldest sister, Martha? Yes, Martha. Here she is, Mother. Martha, Martha, look, there's such, such a goose. Such a goose. Hide, Martha. Hide. Here comes Father. Hide, hide. hide. Hello, Hello, Father. Hello, children. Oh, oh, where is our Martha? Not coming. Not coming? Not coming. Not coming. Not, Not coming. coming. Not coming? Not coming upon Christmas Day? Oh, Bob, she's hiding right here. Here she, she is, is, Martha, Father. She, she was, was hiding. hiding. Oh, honestly, Robert, you are oh so gullible and credulous as well. Tiny, tiny Tim, Tim, Tiny, tiny Tim. Tim. Tiny Tim, there's a goose. A goose, Tiny Tim, a marvelous goose. And, and pudding. pudding. Brady Street Pharmacy and Radio WHT would like to take this opportunity to remind you at this busy time of the year to slow down and cherish every moment as it is happening. Otherwise, that big holiday family dinner that you have been preparing and looking forward to so long may soon be over and you will have missed everything but the pudding. Hello. The pudding is out of the cup. Uh, Can you smell that? A smell like an eating house and a pastry cook's next door to it, and a laundress is next door to that. That was the pudding, like a speckled cannonball, so hard and firm like a speckled cannonball, blazing in half of a half a quartern of ignited brandy. To the pudding. To To the pudding. pudding. To Christmas. To Christmas. To our family. To us. 
God bless us, everyone. Spirit, tell me if Tiny Tim will live. I see a vacant seat and a crutch without an owner. No, no, kind spirit, say he will be spared. Say he will be spared. Mr. Scrooge, I give you Mr. Scrooge, the founder of our feast. If he were here, I'd give him a piece of my mind to feast upon, and I hope he'd have a good appetite too. My dear, the children Christmas Day. To Mr. Scrooge. To, to Mr. Scrooge, Scrooge, the founder of the feast. Now I'd like to found his feast. Scrooge, we must go. Oh, must we leave them so miserable? Oh, they cheer up when you leave. Don't let go my robes. <laughs> <laughs> Uncle Scrooge, of course I invited Uncle Scrooge. And what did he say? He said Christmas was a humbug, and he yeah. believed it too. <laughs> <laughs> Uncle Scrooge may not like Christmas. He may not even like me. So what's the arm? He didn't lose much of a dinner. Oh, oh that was an excellent, excellent dinner. Uh, what do you say, Topper? Oh, don't ask the bachelor. I'm no judge. <laughs> <laughs> oh, either way, you just see. I will go back to Uncle Scrooge every Christmas year and wish him a Merry Christmas and invite him here for Christmas dinner. He can't resist forever. I think I shook him yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, who's up for a game? Oh, oh that's a lovely idea, Fred. I think that's a great Oh, it's a lovely <laughs> evening for a game of Blind Man's Bluff. <laughs> Topper is the blind man tonight, and the players are in position. And here we go. Fred calls out. Here, Topper, Topper, Topper. And Topper jumps for joy. Fred tousles Topper's hair. And Topper is caught Holly in the ivy. Fred spills the table. Topper makes a lunge at Fred. Oh, but wait. What is this? Yes, it seems. Topper is feeling merry. Um, all right. Enough of that game. Let's play yes or no. Yes. No. Is it an animal? Yes. A live animal? Yes. A disagreeable animal? Rather. Yes or no? Yes. Is it a savage animal? Yes. That growls? Yes. And grants? Well, sometimes. Say hey, yes or no? Yes. And talks sometimes? And lives in London? And walks the street? Yes. And is made a show of? No. No! <laughs> is it lead? No. Does it live in a zoo? Is no. Is it killed in market? No. Is it a horse? Or a cow? Or a bull? Or an ass? No. A tiger? A dog? Oh, a cat! A pig. No. I know, Fred. I know what it is. What is it? It's your Uncle Scrooge. <laughs> yes. <laughs> to his health. To his Merry Christmas. To Uncle Scrooge. <laughs> to Scrooge. <laughs> Spirit, your hair is grey. How quickly you age. Is your life so short? It ends tonight. Tonight? At midnight. Spirit, what is that? That something strange? A, a foot or a claw? Coming from beneath your robe? It, it isn't yours. My, what, what are those wretched, hideous creatures? Those abject, miserable children. Look, spirit, look down there. Look how they cling to your garment. A boy and a girl. Yellow, meager, ragged, scowling, wolfish. No perversion of humanity in all the mysteries of creation has monsters have so horrible a dread. Spirit, are they yours? They are man's. The boy is ignorance. The girl is want. Beware of them both. Have they no refuge, no resource? <laughs> Are there no prisons? Are there no workhouses? Spirit? Spirit? Spirit! Spirit? I am in the presence of the ghost of Christmas yet to come. You are about to show me shadows of the things that have not happened, but will happen in the time before us. Is, is that so, spirit? Ghost of the future, I fear you more than any spectre I've seen. 
but your purpose is to do me good, and I hope to live to be another man from what I was. I am prepared to bear your company and do it with a thankful heart. Will you not speak to me? Very well. Lead on. Lead on. I know this place. Just look at all the bankers, merchants, businessmen. All so busy. Oh, and look, there I am. That, no, no, that man isn't me. Uh, uh, don't know much about myself. <laughs> Only know that he's dead. When did he die? Uh, last night, I believe. I thought he'd never die. <clears throat> what was the matter with him? God knows. Uh, oh, what, what has he done with his money? No, no, didn't leave it to me. That's all I know. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to be an awfully cheap funeral. Well, I don't know who anyone's planning to go. Well, I guess we could all volunteer to show up. Oh, I don't mind if lunch is served, but only if there will be lunch. <laughs> <laughs> Spirit, of whom do they speak? What sort of riddle is this? Why do you show me the... Oh, no, no, hey! Spirit, you've taken me now to this low-brow pawn shop in a horrible part of town, about as far from the financial district as you can get, though not so far by your powers. All right, what do you have to say, then? Don't you judge me, then. If he had wanted these things after he died, he might have been more natural when he was alive. It's no sin. Go on, Joe. Open the bundle. Tell me what it's worth. All right. What is it, then? Bed curtains? <laughs> Bed curtains, yes. And his blankets in a shirt. His nicest shirt, too. Not an hole in it, nor a threadbare place. Can you believe they almost buried him in that? Spirit, where are we? I can barely see. This room is so dark, I, I cannot make out anything but lying there on the bed, unwatched unwept, uncared for, the body of this man. Who is it, spirit? Or, or rather, who was it? I'm standing near enough to take the sheet from his face, yet I am powerless to do so. Spirit, if there is any person in this town who feels emotion at this man's death, pray, spirit, show me that person. <laughs> Don't cry, Mother. <laughs> Mommy, why are you crying? We must pay the rent. But we can't pay the rent. But we must pay the rent. We'll just have to wait until your father gets home and tells us what he said. Did you get to see him? What did he say? Oh, I did get to see him, but he said nothing. He would not hear my case. But why not? <laughs> He's dead! He's, He's dead! dead. <laughs> Spirit, you knew what I meant. Let me see some tenderness connected with a death. Cratchit's house. Tiny Tim. Oh, poor Tiny Tim. See? See how his brothers and sisters crowd round his little bed? And his face, so calm and tranquil, like he's sleeping in heavenly peace. Which he is now. He's an angel looking down from a bright and happy heaven. I am sure none of us shall forget poor Tiny Tim, when we recollect how patient and how mild he was. Although he was a little, little child, we shall never quarrel easily among ourselves and forget Tiny Tim in doing it. No, never. Never, never father. father. Never. Well, then I am happy. I am very happy. Spirit, something informs me that we will soon part. Uh, please, tell me na the name of that man whom we saw lying dead. A graveyard? Here that wretched man whose name I am to learn lays underground. Spirit, show me where to look. There? Yes, I, I draw nearer to that stone to which you point. Here, I... I crawl and, and sweep away the dirt and leaves and read the name on the... No. No, no, spirit, no. 
Are these shadows of things that will be? Or are they shadows of things that may be only? Stop pointing and answer me, spirit. Tell me it is possible to depart from the present course and thus prevent the ends you show. Oh, tell me! I will, I will honor Christmas in my heart and try to keep it all the year. I will live in the past, the present, and the future. I will not forget the lessons they teach. Don't tell me that I may sponge away the writing on this stone! Brady Street Pharmacy and Radio WHT would like to take this opportunity to remind you, at this busy time of the year, to slow down and cherish every moment as it is happening. Otherwise, your entire life may soon be over, and you will have missed everything but your own name on a grave marker. Morning. <gasps> morning. Yes. Oh, my, yes, it, it is morning, but what morning? Oh, I, I say, yoo-hoo, boy. What day is this? What day? Why, today is Christmas Day. Christmas Day? <laughs> the, the spirits have done it all in one night. Uh, uh, boy, is there still a prized turkey hanging at the poulterers? I'll say there is. A turkey so large you could stuff it full of Greeks and roll it right into Troy. An intelligent boy. <laughs> a remarkable boy. Uh, boy, here is enough money for the turkey and the cab and some for you as well. Uh, bring it to Bob Cratchit's house and I shall meet you there. I have some things to attend to. Oh, yes, I do. Oh, uh, hello again, Mr. Scrudge. It, it's pronounced... Oh, uh, yes. Uh, my dear madam, how do you do? I hope you succeeded yesterday. A Merry Christmas to you. And, if I may, please accept this. Oh, thank you, Mr. Scrudge. I, I don't know what to say to such munificent... Oh, don't, don't say anything, please. Just come to see me tomorrow. I cannot linger. I'm off to Bob Cratchit's house to see Tiny Tim. But first... <whistles> knock, knock. Who's there? It's your uncle. My uncle who? Your uncle Scrooge. Uncle Scrooge! Merry Christmas, Uncle! Have you come to dine with us? I cannot stay, nephew. I just wanted to say Merry Christmas and to tell the ladies to watch out for that topper fellow. His, his blindfold isn't tied too tightly, if you catch my drift. But now I am off to Bob Cratchit's house to see Tiny Tim. But first... Who is it? It's an old friend, Belle. <gasps> Ebenezer! Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas, Belle. I've come to ask you to come and dine with me at the home of Bob Cratchit. His son is a little cripple boy, Tiny Tim. I thought I might introduce him to your husband, the world-famous physician. Tiny Tim is the nicest boy, Belle. He even said that he hoped people saw him in church because he was a cripple, and it might be pleasant for them to remember upon Christmas Day who made li lame beggars walk and blind men see. Oh, Ebenezer, you had me at little cripple boy. <laughs> Well, here we are at Bob Cratchit's house. Uh, I'll be very quiet. I, I want to play a little joke on him. <clears throat> Who is it? It is your employer, Mr. Cratchit. I have changed my mind about giving you the day. But, sir... You may either report to the shop immediately, or I shall be forced to... Raise your salary. Oh, sir, sir. <laughs> I've never been more serious, Cratchit. Oh, but... uh, Bob, uh, Merry Christmas. And a far merrier Christmas than I have given you in many years. Uh, the turkey shall be here any moment. Uh, uh, this is Belle and her husband, the world-famous physician. And, oh, and where is your son, Bob? Uh, oh, he's right Where there. is Tiny Tim? Oh, he's right there. Oh, I dare say I see him there. Uh, Merry Christmas, Tiny Tim. Do you have anything to say? God bless us, everyone. You have just heard Radio WHT present a carol on Brady... Presented by Charles Dickens. A Christmas Carol was adapted for your imagination by Charles Summers in Wisconsin Hybrid Theater. Heard in this production were Jack Farwell, Alice Chase, Russell Downer, yours truly, Ira Hampton, and special guests, the Bootless Bettys. Sound effects were created by Chris Knapp. Special thanks to the Alchemist Theater and the Bayview Lounge. 
But speaking of the bootless Bettys, what do you say, girls? Have you got one more song for us? You betcha. Mr. Claus, I feel as though I know ya. So you won't mind if I should get familiar, will ya? Boom, but um, but um. Santa baby, just slip a sable under the tree for me. Been an awful good girl, Santa cutie, so hurry down the chimney tonight. Santa baby, a 54 convertible to light blue. I'll wait up for you, dear Santa cutie. So hurry down the chimney tonight. Think of all the fun I missed. Think of all the fellas that I haven't kissed. Next year I could be just as good if you check off my Christmas. Santa baby, forget to mention one little thing, a ring. I don't mean on the phone, Santa baby, so hurry down the chimney tonight. So hurry down the chimney tonight. Hurry down the chimney This has been a joint production of Frontier Radio Theater and Radio WHT. Radio what? Exactly. Frontier Radio Theater and Radio WHT would like to remind you at this busy time of year to continue to support your local businesses, artists, and yes, radio stations. Otherwise, they may all soon become no more than nostalgia like the Brady Street Pharmacy. You have been listening to Frontier Radio Theater on 91.7 WMSC, broadcasting live from the beautiful campus of the Milwaukee School of Engineering in downtown Milwaukee. And Mom, if you're listening, I will be home for Christmas. Because you're going to give you your, your cue. Gotcha. I'm going to say what you do. 